Bam Bam. We're about to take you on a very interesting journey. Yep, for the next four weeks, fam, stick with us because we will be dissecting four vows mm -hmm. for a godly marriage. Just get straight into it. So I remember when I had to write my vows for you. Mm. Um, it was a surreal moment. You know, really? I, yeah, because it's it's a day that I've always longed for, mm -hmm. you know, to declare my love for you in front of a host of witnesses, yeah. uh, in the presence of God. And yeah, I was obviously teary-eyed, you know, drafting my vows. But, but babe, I want to ask yeah. you, like, vows. Uh, did you understand the significance of what vows were at that time? At the time I did, you know, I, I know that I read up a lot about it and... Um, going back into the word of God and seeing how God vowed to us and declared to Israel mm. um, in the Old Testament that he'll never leave them nor forsake them. And yeah. he was with Jacob, Abraham. And, 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 and I realized that, you know what, it's, it's, it cuts deeper than words. Yeah. Vows are not just merely words. They're not yeah. just feelings. In fact, fam, hi. In fact, vows are not just a reflection of my feelings on that day. Mm. They're not just today I feel so excited and so, so in, in love, love because it's our wedding day yeah but actually vows are are more of a how can i put it a it's promise. a promise it's a promise but not a not just one day's promise a daily promise it, a daily it's actually devotional a de exactly it's a devotional reminder mm. for my heart mm. to remind my heart about the declaration and promises i'm making to you so that i can daily and continually yeah. remember why i'm with you and why I decided to marry you. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the that's yeah. my journey with vows. And your vows, how did you? Yeah, I do actually remember that uh, we, yeah. we we took some time to understand what vows mm. were, mm. you know. And like Dice said, you know that you know God's word does not return void. Yeah. So whatever God says, you must believe it, right? Yeah, and yeah. trust that He is going to do whatever He says. Mm, mm. Well, as humans, obviously we fail in every. And everything but mm. um saying vows to one another was so important i remember or oh, writing writing down the vows mm. you know we took our sip obviously go our separate corners whenever yeah. when at home you know write down your vows and think about okay what am i actually vowing to this man mm. for the rest of my life you know um i remember walking down the aisle guys and literally i i was so emotional and i zoned out yeah. and i just i would i got to you and we looked at each other and obviously listening to the pastor. Uh, but when it was time to say our vows, you know, it comes from the heart. Yes, from that moment, obviously. Mm. But then you come back home and you remember that, but you vowed to say this. You vowed mm. to say that. But that's not something that you then pinpoint to mm. you and be like, but mm. this is what you said. What you said to it's me. for you to remember what you said to me, what you promised to me. Exactly what I said earlier, mm -hmm. that the vows are meant for me and a constant reminder for my heart. And, and and my mind as well because the whole body and has to be involved when it comes into marriage and mm. when i say body i'm trying to say my whole being mm. has to be present in like this I, marriage like i always it's say it's not just a hard thing it's not just a head thing like i always say i think people always forget mm. you know that we are spirit beings at the end of the day that's the it. spirit is bound to the other spirit and then we're becoming one flesh and get so therefore you need to make sure that whatever you're vowing to your partner at yep. that time yeah. it's a daily reminder that this is what we're going to, i'm going to do for you um so yes let's get into vow number one let for this us week. let us um, so the first vow hmm. it's a very deep one actually it says yes. i promise that god will be my first priority and my spouse will be my second wow and with that i want to attach the scripture fam Colossians 3 verse 12 mm -hmm. uh, in the New Living Translation. It says here, since God chose you, since God chose you, since yeah. he chose me, right? To be the holy people he loves. You must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, mm -hmm. kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Mm -hmm. So that first phrase is so important. Since God chose us, and this is where this vow is so significant. That's why we're saying the first priority must be God in your marriage. Mm -hmm. It's very important because your first love is God. And as the scripture says, he chose us first. Yeah. Remember, babe, God chose me first. Yeah. You didn't choose me. Mm -hmm. You understand? You chose me later in life, but God had already had his hand 
upon me so irrespective of this v- marriage yeah. and this um bond we have now for eternity god still remains number one in my life and he has to be yeah he has to be i think basically what we're trying to say as well is that before i married you yeah. before we were in a relationship yeah. i think that's also a good point is that you know sometimes you find christ before your marriage sometimes you find christ after marriage yeah, you become yeah. born again True. whichever place um time stamp, time mm. time stamp. Mm. so um we both found christ yeah. early, uh, late teenage yeah. years so already that love that i had for god you know i understood that you know i, I love god and i, mm. I understand you know that he loves me that mm. he has chosen me as his child i'm a mm. royal priesthood mm. i'm a holy nation you know so therefore mm. i need to never give up the love that i have for god just mm. because now my husband is here yeah. because i mean like we fall in love guys you mm. know the typical thing mm. ah here's got so here comes this man you know mm. you know soon me away you know i'm in love with him mm. but then i cannot lose sight of god just because he's here mm. because things will fall apart yeah. if i keep focusing on him if i make him my god this say is not my Very god i really yeah. i have a god i have mm. god mm. as my father you know as my protector i have jesus and That's i've got it. the holy spirit and i need to continuously make sure that i do give them the servant the glory because at the end of the day mm. once i do serve them well i i i i worship them and they will then help me to be able to love you said the right way for god is love mm. therefore he gives me love mm. to be able to love my husband so true and that's why it's important on this first note that you need to recognize your first love mm. and you touch on a very important part there when you said hore you you could either be born again before you get married or you could maybe find christ in your marriage of the marriage you know um however honestly from my point of view this is just a personal view i would love it and that we both find Christ before we get married. That's mm. just a personal point. I'm not saying it, it can happen would be after. Reason? My reason is that you then understand the significance of loving God first. You understand mm. because your eyes will be fixed upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith and your faith, right? So, that's just for me. I would have had it that way and I'm grateful that we had it that way that I knew God before you, uh, you knew God before me and that your salvation was already locked, sealed and delivered to you. That's so that's another point. That's another point because remember Paul <laughs> he ran his race. Paul said I finished the race. Mm. I finished the race. He had James, he had Timothy, but he he didn't say we finished the race. Yeah. You know, he realized that towards the end of his ministry, I have finished the race. Mm. I've run a good um I've fought a good fight of faith. Mm. You see at the end of the day, fam, the race you're running here on earth whether you're married or not you're still an individual yeah. and that's why you need to remain yeah. fixed and focused on Christ because like you said love you can fall in and then sometimes love falls apart because of situations but God still remains he, he said I'll never change yeah. you understand yeah. yesterday today this is still the same I actually thought of something right now it's yeah. almost like a yoke right mm-hmm. isn't it like a yoke or a balancing beam whereby okay. If this is strong in Christ and I'm strong in Christ there's a balance. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. If one is stronger and the other one is weak then obviously you need to help one help another. Other. Mm. But what I'm trying to say is that um as much as I let's say I am in Christ mm-hmm. and um we need to find um sorry I'm losing my trail of thought. Yeah. <laughs> But basically what I'm trying to say is that when I found Christ. Yeah. And when you found Christ. Yeah. We love him with all our heart. Of course. Yeah. Right? Mm. And yes, it's a kingdom race and then at the end of the day when we do see Jesus, you know, he's going to be like, "Okay, but what did you do for me?" Yeah. But I also want to point out is that as much as people want to look at us and be like, "Oh, you guys are starting to live together, you mm, know, you're starting alike. you think with maybe they think that we spend all the time together all the time, mm-hmm. you know, all our time together mm. all the time." But mm. no, actually, you know, we have our separate times because mm. when we are having That's our it. separate times with God, yeah. Yeah, we strengthening one we can then strengthen one another That's and it. then move forward as a couple. Don't get lost into your emotions mm. as a married couple. Mm. Don't get too lost. Now, I remember falling in love with you. Okay. I remember <laughs> rekindling a friendship or a a what did we have? You wouldn't say it's a friendship, so it was an acquaintance, right? It was an acquaintance. Yeah. Rekindling, we knew each other, yeah, rekindling. We yes, rekindling that 
acquaintance and then it became it brewed and became friendship and obviously we caught it and so forth but falling in love with you was so magical so oh man it was just everything you know when you just ah guys like all you see is just like roses and and hearts and and you just that feeling of just there's nothing else in this world that could just replace this feeling okay i remember those feelings yeah but in marriage we shouldn't get too stuck up in those emotions because we must remember our first love christ god must remain like when <laughs> i'm guilty for this when we're in bed in the morning and we need to get up i still need to know that i need to spend separate quiet time with the lord yep. now we can do a communal worship and 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 serving of god together yes. we should actually as as a married couple and we but do your quiet time is but very the quiet important. time alone time with me and god alone like mm. shut the door and Rahu goes to the other rooms or whatever that's what's needed mm. because god wants a relationship with me alone mm. as well yes we're together in marriage and we have a ministry in marriage now that we're together god has established a ministry but yeah. he still has a ministry with me alone and i still need to serve him as his disciple right and yeah if i do pull you back into the blankets because you're getting up too early in the Is morning he loves to pull me every like single snuggle. time I like he to loves snuggle, to but, snuggle but that's like and i'm like no babe, i need your Okay, winter it is cold but yeah. now you want to be in bed all the time but exactly like, because usually our quiet times or my quiet time is at 5 a.m in the morning mm. so obviously now when i want to get out of bed he says just wants to now snuggle again what do you eat no. i'm losing out <laughs> but anyway i get it but the thing is rebuke your partner your spouse if you then must I will rebuke, you. rebuke me I'm because rebuke i'm holding you. you back from your time exactly with god. and i know it's wrong forgive me man. yeah, yeah. It's not, and if, i'm if, selfish if, but you I'm are being selfish because i want to spend time sorry, with god Father, i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> <laughs> but yes um it's very important that we don't get too caught up in just you know being so fixated upon one another that everything we do in the household it's all about us 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 mm. that we do not say no listen separate time i need to be with my god yeah yeah hmm. yeah because i mean like if you don't spend time with god you're gonna end up um if you too much in each other's faces yeah. you're gonna get frustrated you're not gonna yeah. like each other oh, anymore definitely. you don't know what you're gonna do yeah. so rather just have some time with god and you know what and then find peace in the morning yeah. pray pray alone and then after that come back together and um you know yeah. and pray again yeah. Whew, important and the last point we want to touch on is maintain perspective in your marriage you know? mm. there's a very lovely line here guys i really need to read this out like verbatim like wow it, it really it hit me okay it says here you must love god first if you want to properly love your spouse mm. you must love god first because god is love right yeah. and so you'll never understand true love unless you know god because he gave it all right agreed and then the next point says putting your spouse in a position higher than god is not loving your spouse mm. that mm. is not loving mm. putting mm. your spouse higher in a higher position than god is not loving yeah. it's putting them rather in a position they cannot fulfill actually they will only let you down and disappoint you from this position they cannot fulfill the needs that need to be met as a number one priority in your life yeah and maybe that's why many other relationships marriages of course end up being toxic or you become too you know what it is it's almost it's, like too attached no too, it is it's having expectations that he say will that's be you know the one he will provide for me the way i want him to do he wants exactly. he will do everything in my list and that i want him to do Gandhi, it's promises promises exactly. and expectations exactly wow. so therefore it's like but i'm trying to it's like I'm asking God for this, mm. but I'm asking it through my husband. I'm like, no, ask God first. He will provide. He'll provide. He will Aim. help DC. Exactly. Equip me. Exactly. Empower me. Exactly. Anoint me maybe even. Exactly. To do that which you desire. Yes. So you it's need. very important also to wow. pray for your wow. partner. You know, if you feel like he can't do something like for me <laughs> with me guys. <laughs> my one thing, my one prayer is like DC and time. If if I'm praying, I'm like, Lord, please just but you know help what, my fam, husband and There time. is hope. Yeah. I I'm doing so well now, fam. I really am. She knows it. She's <laughs> laughing, but she knows I'm but, doing but he's, much better. He's doing much better. I mean, like we've only mm. been married for two years, so. Yeah. But I can see that my prayers have been answered. Yes. I can see that God is working Hallelujah. in our relationship because I do take time to just spend time with Him. Mm. You see. So thank you for uh, 
you know, giving me credit for that. At least, um, yeah. <laughs> at least what? At least you believe in me. <laughs> you know, like I have I'll, hope. I'll be, I'm I'll hopeful. be much better. Yeah, yeah I'm hopeful. That's, that's You're not a perfect be, being. God yeah. is the only perfect being, my love. Mm, and um, we're on this journey. It's a yeah. journey. It's not a destination. No, it Just because we got married doesn't mean that. Oh, boom, bam. You know, just because we were together for 10 years that I think that I know my husband. No, no. He's ever evolving. He's ever changing. And I should always give him grace and time to change and evolve. But within that time, I should be on my knees praying for him. Wow. That's actually another point. Yeah, we should be praying for one another. Hmm. Daily. 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 Wow. Daily. Wow. Fam, I want to ask you this question. This vow concerning loving God first, making him your priority mm-hmm. over your spouse. Yeah. How does it look like to you? Yeah. When you heard this vow, yeah. like what's your perspective what, yeah, what, about what, it? what is going through your mind about this particular one? But um, for today, that's that. That's what we're going to give you for now. You need to stay tuned because we've got the next vow that we're going to share with you guys yes. next week. Same time, same place, of course, right? Yeah. And um, I don't know if we should give them a teaser on that vow or rather subscribe, <laughs> click the notification bell so that you will be alerted when we do post. Yeah. And then you'll be number one to yeah. come and watch it. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you, Pam, yeah. for joining us. Mm. And we really hope that this will continue to help you build your marriages and yeah, give you hope for the future That's if it. you're not married yet. Exactly. Yeah, so, so consider those vows before you write them. Yeah. <laughs> before you say much, them to yeah. your partner. Exactly. Really, really no, you think must. about it. Really, so this really. is vow number one. That's it. Mm. Until the next God video. Oh, vlog. <laughs> Bye, fam. Bye, fam. Mwah.